Um, and then after that, once the scripted plays get out, it's kind of stagnant. And it's kind of – it's something we haven't really seen a lot this year. Um, they've actually struggled in their first couple series. These uh, – this game against Florida, they were dominant in the first two series, and then it went flat, completely flat. Um, accuracy was a big deal. Coach Smart talked about it in his press conference today. Um, got to start with accuracy. Got to get balls thrown in the correct windows on time uh, and in the correct portions and in, in the correct spots. That's 100% true. Um, it's it's a whole lot of blatant misses, though, guys. It's it's not even close. A lot of this stuff. Some even the, some of the completions we're going to look at from Stetson and Dewan. It's just like my God, man. It is bad, bad, bad quarterback play at this point in the season, um, which makes you kind of wonder just how bad everybody else is on that roster. Look, everybody's going to come to me talking about, oh, well, st- you know, JT's not really healthy. I saw him limping on the sideline. Look, I, I'll read you this. I'll read you the uh, article from 24-7 Sports, and it might as well at the end of the article said, it's brought to you by JT Daniels. This this message is sponsored by JT Daniels. Like we've been we've been hearing ads all over the Dagum TV for the last seven months. This reads and sounds exactly like an advertisement for a football player. Listen to this. JT Daniels is on standby. The long heralded transfer from Southern Cal is ready. He wants to play. He believes he's ready to face live fire in a college football game for the first time since tearing an ACL more than a year ago. Georgia's coaching staff, however, is not as excited to push the former five-star recruit onto the field anytime soon. Even as starter Stetson Bennett the fourth struggles and fails, I might add, to give the Bulldogs a consistent deep threat as a passer. Sources close to the Bulldogs program tell 24-7 Sports. It was written two days before the Florida game. Guys, I, I've been in media for you know a quick minute now, but... I'm going to tell you, that, like I said, that might as well have ended with brought to you by the JT Daniels Foundation. That, that was a blatant hit piece. That was he's ready to go. He just ain't getting playing time right now. Why? I don't know, guys. But this, this whole narrative that, oh, he's limping on the sidelines, he ain't healthy. His people are telling you he's healthy. He's healthy. So if this is the best that they've got, it only makes you wonder just how bad Stetson Bennett or JT Daniels, excuse me, is playing in practice. Um, and we're going to get to see it this week because Stetson Bennett is day-to-day slash questionable with an AC joint sprain. So maybe he's a gamer. Maybe he's going to come out there and light it up, but he's he's ready to he's ready to face live fire in a college football game for the first time since tearing his ACL at, at, at Southern Cal. The highly touted, heralded five-star recruit. He's ready to play. We'll, we'll see if he gets to play. That's the question. So um, there's a lot to clean up here, but a lot of it is quarterback play, guys. Um, Another guy we're going to pick on tonight, we're going to pick on two offensive linemen. We're going to pick on them quite a bit. Uh, it's Jamari Sawyer and Justin Schaefer, the whole left side of the offensive line. Um, we're going to get after him tonight. I, I think they did not play very well. Uh, we've been telling you all season how Justin Schaefer is a boomer bust offensive guard. He is either driving guys seven yards down the field or he's on his face at the line of scrimmage. He was on his face quite a bit on Saturday. And a lot of people want to ask me, hey, why are, why are we not running Zamir more? He only had seven touches, and I know he had the big play, but why didn't we give him more touches? Look, guys, when you're down, you, you have to throw the football. It's, it's as clear as – it's as, as simple as that. When you're down and the other team is scoring at will, what you guys will notice as we go through this tonight, the time just eats off the clock. It just goes. We go from one possession where there's 15 minutes in the first quarter or seven minutes in the first quarter to next thing you know, there's two minutes, and Georgia's just getting the ball back. So. Give credit where credit is due. Florida's offense, which we're going to look at later on in the week, Florida's offense, or tomorrow rather, Florida's offense dominated this football game. And their defense played just good enough to give them a consistent and an easy lead. And then they protected it the rest of the football game. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. Tricks up the sleeve, right? We heard all week last week. What's Munkin got for him? What's Munkin got for him? Does he have any special tricks? Well, yeah. How about he opens the game in 23 personnel? For those who don't know what that is, That's two backs, three tight ends. He was in 20 personnel, a ton, 21, 22, 23 personnel. It's something that I thought he was going to do a lot this year, and he finally got to it in game six of the season. You remember him back in his days in Cleveland last year, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb were both on the field a lot of the time. So this is something that I always call this just stretch sweep or stretch zone. 
Coach Smart called this truck sweep uh, after the game. So I, I like that term, truck sweep. And look, guys, this is just – remember what we talked about with Mullen getting everybody bunched in just to get outside? It's the same thing. They're getting a whole bunch of bodies on the edge and getting Zamir White in. Look what it does to this corner right here. He has no idea what to do. Does he come out and set the edge? Does he, does he play inside? Same for the safety. Safety's got no clue. He gets sucked up in and then enters an alley. I mean, like the old rec league coaches tell you, I could drive my truck through that hole. That's the exact same thing right here. I could drive my truck through that hole right there. What I didn't expect to see is Zamir White take it 70 and nobody even come close to catching him. I mean, granted, how about a block right there? Is that Trey McKitty? Of course it's Trey McKitty. Look at Trey McKitty latched on with the, with the backside safety right here. Bam. I'm telling you guys, I, I, I love watching that guy on tape. And here, here's my thing. It's two seasons in a row for me. My favorite guy to watch on tape is a tight end. Last year, my favorite guy to watch on tape was Charlie Warner. This year, it's Trey McKitty. So what's the, what's the commonality there? It's Todd Hartley. Todd Hartley is very clearly coaching these guys and coaching them with effort. Look at 87. We need to go watch this down here. Look at 87. That's a dude blocking with effort on the first play of the game. We saw this all week last week when we broke down the Kentucky tape. Going to 0-59. What are we looking at? Are they ever going to field it? Oh, are they ever going to fold a zero? Guys, this is something we've talked about on this channel for a fat minute. Trey Hill, throughout his career, has struggled with zero techniques. What is a fold technique? It is where you take the right guard. Let's take the screen off. It's where you take, this is the center. It's where you take the right guard, block down on the zero, and then pull the center around the guard. And I'm going to show you why it needs to be done right here. Because, again, Trey Hill has struggled and struggled and struggled with these zero techniques. He keeps getting driven into the backfield, okay? So what I would do is, Ben Cleveland, we talked about this last week, best down blocker probably in college football at this point. Um, bring him down on that zero, pull Trey Hill back around, and insert him on the front side inside linebacker like you're already trying to do, okay? Ben is doing nothing for this combo block on this five technique out here. He's doing nothing. He's blocking his own guy. Look at that. If you can see that, he is putting his helmet in the back of Warren McClendon. So what good does it do us to have our center just getting his crap shoved in and getting pushed down the line of scrimmage and for our running back to just run into the back of Ben Cleveland? What is the point of that? Why not create a hole in a gap, down block with the guard, wrap with the center, get him up on the inside linebacker, and then we're off to the races. We're one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Instead, we keep banging our head against the wall, trying to block this stretch zero by ourselves. It's just, guys, if you don't got it, you don't got it. Here we go, 21 personnel. Told you he was in 20 a lot, right? Two backs, same thing right here. They are, I believe, in 20 straight two zero personnel, right? Two backs, no tight end in the formation. Uh, I think this is Rosimi up here, Karis Jackson or Jermaine Burton. Something they hadn't done all year, but it's something – that Munkin has done throughout his career as an offensive coordinator. So getting back to a little bit of his roots here and just running simple RPOs. It's really just RO. Like you got to run and a pass, or excuse me, an RP. You got to run and a pass. There really is no option right there. And even then, like, Brenton Cox goes with the, the bubble. He's just throwing it. He's automatic key to throw that, I would assume. We're going to 122. All right, here, here, here's something we're going to talk about all night tomorrow night with uh, with the Florida film, okay, uh, on offense versus Georgia's defense. I thought they did a great job of when they were running bubbles, when they were running arrow routes with their running backs. They did an excellent job of rubbing or, for a fan from a fan's perspective, picking, setting picks on that inside linebacker. Georgia's not really doing it right here. And it's my only question. I got a couple of questions tonight. All right, so – you guys have known for the last five weeks at this point, I've been a big-time Munkin defender. Um, either there were some busted routes or they didn't execute or the game plan was just not very good, okay? Um, now, I know the deep shots were there, guys. I know wide receivers were open. They were running downfield and all that. The minor details, the reasons you guys are here for this channel, for this Patreon account, I'm going to show you tonight that they missed on some of these things, and this is one of them right here. Why are we running a 10-yard – like skinny post right here with Jermaine Burton when clearly the entire purpose of the play 
is to hit Kendall Milton on the arrow. I mean, he is on him now. Two-step drop, get on the arrow. So if that's the case, guys, why are we not running some type of slant right in here and picking this safety that's running with our running back? Why are we not getting in his way? Why are we just letting a good athlete run in space like that and close on this and make an incompletion and dang near pick it off for a touchdown back the other way? Why are we not creating some type of rub or something with our route scheme? If we're going to get into a bunch formation like this, let's let's take the, the tight end, run in vertical, run, do something. Take Jermaine Burton, run a quick slant in here, do, and then drag Darnell Washington. Do, do something, okay? Don't just come out here and allow this guy to run into space freely. And that's something you're going to see Florida did excellently uh, Saturday against Georgia. Georgia, on the other hand, not so much. Third and seven right here. This will be the last touchdown for Georgia until Dewan Mathis comes in. And we're not going to watch it um, towards the end because I got a lot of respect for 81 and the way he handled this, the way he's going to continue to handle this. So we're not even going to look at it. I'm just going to show you what they run. Um, Marcus is going to run a post route right here. Um, and then I think that's Kiaris behind him. Harris is going to stack him off the line of scrimmage. Boom. See how they're stacked? He's going to stack him off the line of scrimmage and then run an out route. Now, here's my only thing. If I'm Florida, my question when I go back and look at the tape is, what the heck is this safety doing? All right, this is the only deep safety. Look, one, five down linemen, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so that's 10 guys in a safety. I didn't count those, like, nice and clear. One, five down linemen is six, seven, eight linebacker, nine, 10, and 11. Got it. There's 11 guys in the picture on the field. There is nobody occupying this void right here. So what happens as soon as the ball snap? Safety opens up directly to the middle of the field. If you can see him right there. He has got his hips going that away. Now, the only problem is he overcorrects a lot. Stetson holds him with his eyes and then delivers a strike to Rosemi. Um, and again, we're not going to watch that. I'm, I'm not doing it. So this is the other problem, guys. Everybody wants to know why Georgia didn't run the ball over and over and over again, and we're going to talk about this later. Look, man, they were in bare front all day long. They were in bare front all day long. What is bare front? A zero, and now they're stretched out to a five technique because they're in third and long. But even on first down, this guy was a four eye inside the tackle, right? And this outside linebacker was walked up on the line of scrimmage. They got five down linemen right here and two backers. There's seven guys in the box. Seven. Now, they drop some dudes right here. They bring pressure elsewhere. Um, but that's why they didn't run the ball a ton. You got heavy, 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 heavy boxes. Something smart talked about today. Look, here's something you'll know about Kirby. If Kirby's talking football, he's telling you the truth. If he's talking X's and O's, he's telling you the truth. If he's talking why so-and-so didn't travel or is so-and-so healthy or what's going on with so-and-so, you can guarantee he's probably not telling you all of the truth. Might be telling you some of the truth. He's probably not telling you all the truth. If he's talking football, he's talking truth. So when he says we're getting a lot of heavy looks, this is what he's talking about. We're talking about seven, seven down linemen.